Hi, and welcome to the Kent Now podcast. I'm Mayor Dana Ralph. In this podcast, you will hear from city leaders, city workers, and engaged residents. We discuss local news, current events, and provide educational and engaging content for the Kent resident who wants to stay plugged into our community. Thanks for listening. Now here are our hosts, Josh Mossberg and Tracy Taylor. Of course it is. Thank you, Steve. Takes a team mm-hmm. and an army and somebody that's not blonde. Just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, then. What episode are we on? Six? Is this episode six? Yeah, it's episode six. Episode number six. Yay. Yay. We're back. Welcome back to Kent Now. I'm one of your hosts, Tracy Taylor. I am the other one of your hosts, Josh Mossberg. Mm-hmm. And uh, we yeah. have a lot. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly who you are. And you are that. <laughs> you stop. <laughs> oh, if you only knew how much work it takes to do this oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Push that thing right we, on. We out don't of here. have chairs today. No chairs today. We're actually standing. Too bad you can't see this. Mm-hmm. But we are standing for today's Not by episode. choice. No, actually, no, it's not by choice. They lifted the table and they took the chairs out of the room. So... They're gone. They are. But that's okay. I don't mind standing maybe, because... Maybe they were trying to say something. That maybe... Do we need to exercise more? Probably. Yes. Okay. Or the fact that when we sit down, we sound tired. Mm, I always sound tired. I don't know about that. I am tired. Well, I mean, it, it is daylight savings. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my third cup of coffee. It's so not we, doing it. Okay, not doing anything. Let's talk about what's in your coffee because it smells good. It does. Yeah. What, what are you drinking in your coffee today? Um, well... We go with the artisanal breakfast blend. Stop it. From Safeway. I love that. It is quite bougie, <laughs> if you ask me. And then I have the, you know, I don't actually know the brand of the creamer. It's just some generic sugar free. Sugar free. French vanilla. I love that for creamer. you. Mm-hmm. Why sugar free though? Doesn't it have like that taste to it that makes it you go. Ta- no, it tastes fine because I have so much coffee. If. You know, I just have the sugar one. I'm just going to be, it's probably just not good for my health. (laughs) You know? Are you trying to say something to me right now? I mean, because that's, I I have the sugar stuff in my coffee. Your your choice. Yeah, but that is up to you. Well, and I'm not drinking coffee, notice. I do notice. I am drinking the Jade Citrus Mint Tea and Peach Tranquility. It's the. Wow. The, what they call at Starbucks, the medicine ball. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Is it? Making you tranquil and peaceful. Uh, it's trying to. And I'm pretty tired. Into a too. ball. <laughs> I'm pretty tired too, considering that does that you, that does something that has caffeine. I, I don't. I don't know, but I like it. It tastes good. It does taste good. It does, and yep. it smells peachy and minty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's talk about what's happening out in Kent. First and foremost, though, we do need to say thank you, a big, big, big thank you to all of our residents that came out to see and support Mayor Dana Ralph at State of the City on Tuesday. Yeah, it was a really great event. Uh, we had it at Kent Meridian High School again this year. Uh, great turnout. Mayor Ralph gave some updates to our residents and business owners and some uh, regional elected officials and just community leaders that came out talking about all the great stuff that's been happening in Kent over the past year, uh, what the city's kind of working on right now and what's coming up. Mm-hmm. So a lot of really exciting stuff. Uh, we had some fun swag, mm-hmm. uh, some tasty treats yeah, from did. Project Feast and uh, La Huerta, mm-hmm. and it was a great event. We talked about that in the last episode where we were talking about conchas. Oh, yes. Those were really good. Those were quite good. <laughs> they were very, very good. So again, if you missed it, it will be online, and you can check it out on our Facebook page, too. I know that he's been in the the social media realm for a while. He's done some amazing videos, and I know it doesn't really necessarily tie into Kent, but it's actually quite topical right now because he is everywhere, and I'm talking about Macklemore. Oh. Yeah. I'm actually I'm a huge fan, first mm-hmm. and foremost. I think his music is good. I want to say legit, but that really dates me when I say legit. Don't say that. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, uh, this weekend I remember I heard... Thrift Shop. That was that was big when I was in, in school. downtown. Do you not remember downtown? Downtown was a big one. Uh, his new album, Ben, is out, and he has no tour stops here in Seattle. 
the nerve. I know. And I'm I'm kind of mad about this. He did do a pop up concert, but it was like the day of that he was doing the concert. The damage control. It's not. Well, yeah, probably. But that's not fair because those of us that want to see it and couldn't leave work to go see his pop up show kind of bummed out about that. So if anybody you knows, should tweet at him, I'm, you know, I'm going to. And if anybody knows Macklemore, can you please tell him that um, he needs to do a show at, <gasps> I know, Showware Center. Oh. He needs to do Showware Center. I love that. And speaking of Showware Center, guess what? What? <laughs> you know, it was a couple weeks ago, Ice Cube, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and Exhibit were all at Showware Center. What the f*** is up, King Washington? Bugs. See? Vibes. Yep, totally. Right. And he recognized that he was here in Kent. I love that for him. Yep. He was there. He in was. Kent. Yes. Okay. He was in Kent. All right. So since we're talking, we're done. We're done with music. We're moving on. Uh, we do have a couple of other things that we need to get down to, and one, of course, is the matching grant program. We are about uh, a little less than two weeks to get your uh, applications in because April first is when the deadline is, and then our grant task force goes through and makes some determinations on where some of that city money is going to go. What? Do, so. Can anyone get a grant? How does this work? So you have to be a recognized neighborhood in the city of Kent. So if you're not a recognized neighborhood, what you do is you go to kentwa.gov, you go down to guides, you click on neighborhood program, get yourself, your HOA or your whole neighborhood registered as a recognized neighborhood. Then you fill out the paperwork. We have you recognized at city council and you're good to go. I mean, it's really very simple. It's just a matter of getting your neighbors all on the same page and then actually working together to improve your neighborhood. It's a fantastic opportunity. I love that. Yeah, I bet you do. What do they do? What do you mean? What do they do? When they all, when they're all recognized and it's all, then what? Well, I mean, you'd hold meetings and you get to do, I mean, you get to do cool things, you know, as a a recognized Kent neighborhood. And you have an opportunity to get some money towards one of your neighborhood projects. So I know Kent Downtown Partnership has turned in quite a few applications, too, because they do some amazing things in downtown throughout the year, really, if you think about it. Yeah, they have a ton of great events. But hey, if your neighborhood wants something, you better you better get that application in KDP sweeping, <laughs> sweeping it all. <laughs> totally. They're going to take Gotta it get in all. There. Mm-hmm. All right. And we had such a successful coffee and conversations with the mayor at the Kent Senior Center. Now we have an opportunity to hang out with the chief. Yep. The Coffee with the Chief event is happening on March 29th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at Cutters Point Coffee on the West Hill. Same sort of vibe. Show up, hang out, get some coffee, chat, learn about what the Kent Police Department is working on. Uh, get a chance to meet the chief and just get some updates. It's a good time. So, of course, as we wrapped up State of the City, Josh, Mayor went on that whirlwind tour of um, media outlets. She was on Gian Ursula's show on, on Cairo Radio. She was on with Ari Hoffman. She's also talking a little bit about public safety with Brandy Cruz. If you missed that, you can check it out. It's at her website. Now, we've got a couple of other things, Josh, and I'm going to get into this because I'm a little confused and I know that you can probably help me out a little bit more about this. What is the accessory dwelling units? What What is this and, and why is this important? Yeah, so that's kind of uh, an ongoing discussion at the city council. So, right for context, basically, uh, this is a part of the Kent Housing Options Plan, uh, which was passed in 2021 by the Kent City Council. Um, essentially, what that was was just kind of lay out the future of housing in Kent, our priorities, our policies, what kind of housing, and where we want to put it. Right. Um, so, accessory dwelling units were something that, as a part of that housing options plan process, were was going to be revisited, and so that's what we're doing now. And so. What ADUs are, accessory dwelling units are, are basically like those secondary units, those kind of smaller uh, rooms or like almost... But they call them like mother-in-laws? Sheds. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay. Basically, they just sit on the same lot as your single family home, right? Okay. And so what the city's trying to do is update the ordinance we have governing, you know, the governing ADUs. Uh, and they want to hear from you. Okay. There's a survey. So how do you go about in taking the survey? Well... That's a fantastic question. I thought so. You could send it uh, with a pigeon, like a carrier pigeon. 
Hmm. Or you hard. could ride on horseback. Or probably oh. the easiest way of doing it would be going to kentwall.gov slash ADU. I love that. Mm-hmm. And you can just give your feedback right there. Fantastic. I got to find um, a horse, though. Yeah, we also have, an, I believe, engage.kentwall.gov. That's, okay. that's a... Also a good state. Wonderful. Well, we all love our Kent Parks, and they've got their brand new spring and summer guides out, and they should be in your mailbox now. And that, that is all factual. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you see some of the classes that they offer? No. Okay. Well, you know, they've got soccer. They've got t-ball. <laughs> they've got softball. They actually have dance classes, Josh. And cooking. <gasps> cooking? That, I didn't see that. I know. What? Wow. My mind is blown. Oh. I cannot believe that. I love to cook. No, not really. No, I am not a very good cook at all. That's the reason why I get takeout all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me too. It's not good for my bank account. <laughs> it's, it's, it's certainly not. Yeah, so we send out our uh, Parks and Recreation Guide every season Mm -hmm. uh, full of really great programs opportunities. So definitely check that out. You probably already have it. And if you don't or you lost it because you might misplace things because you I do that. Do you? Yeah, sometimes. Mm, Okay. Um, You can go online at kentwa.gov or mycatparks.com. I love that. Both of those work. Um, Something else coming up with our parks department is the Kent Student Art Exhibit. That's happening March 13th through the 31st. Uh, Basically just the Kent Arts Commission kind of presenting a student art walk, walk, not work, walk downtown. I like them both, personally. (laughs) You like them both? Yeah, I like them, yeah. Uh, With the Kent School school District's teachers, students, and parents, uh, both the Kent Downtown Partnership and Kent Station are involved. There's going to be over 500 Kent School District students' art displays as a part of National Youth Arts Month. I love that. Also, Tracy, the Kent Panther Lake Library finally reopening. It was closed for 10 months uh, due to repairs because Mm -hmm. a vehicle sadly... Drove into the building. How does that happen? Very carefully. <laughs> no, no, that was the issue. That actually, they weren't being careful. Here is a good tip okay. from your city government: Do not drive into public buildings, please. There's no such thing as a drive-through library. No. Yeah. They they might have thought. I mean, there's a lot of drive-throughs out there these days. You know, Starbucks, uh, the Jimmy Johns, they got <laughs> one. But uh, you know, there probably actually is drive-through libraries. But that that particular location was not. Um, I I like the enthusiasm mm-hmm. though. Yeah, they excited were, to get a new book. They just were really trying to read. Uh, totally. So I mean, I mean, you want to get that personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut, right? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. got to read all of the books. I believe it was twelve. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? No, I didn't think so. Okay. Then why did you ask? Well, I thought maybe maybe there was a glimmer of hope that you knew about. Absolutely the, not. Re- okay. Did you ever do Scholastic books? Uh, I don't Yeah, maybe. I know when I was in elementary school, there was a program called the Accelerated Reading Program. Oh. And you read books and took little tests and you got little tags that you could flex on all your friends with. Stop. I was the number one reader in the school. I believe that. Mm-hmm. I totally mm-hmm. believe so that. So I was walking around thinking I was hot. Have you ever been to I've a heard book the drive? Word scala- oh. Do you remember yes, book drives? Yes. I remember the, the book fairs. Yes, book fairs. Not drives. Well, close. Fair, book fairs? Yeah. There, I feel like there was another name for them. But those were hype. It was a good time. There were a lot of books uh, I liked. I think I, I was like super into the Magic Treehouse series at the okay, time or okay. something. Or um, I don't know what else. They, they had cool little pens and like pencils and erasers. I Yes, mm-hmm. I do remember that. The one thing that I specifically remember about the book drives was it was a big van. Oh, and you, you were and it would pull up to your van? school. Yeah, it was like a huge, like a bus almost. And then um, you got ex- if you earned so much time in your classroom, you got how much time in the van. And of course, what? I know. right? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> they, Tell me more about going into the van. So you would go in and like they had shelves of all the books. And so like, for instance, when it was when I was younger, it was Babysitter's Club. It was um, Nancy Drew. Oh, yep. And we had Clifford, the Big Red Dog. Um, That's my boy. Yep. And then uh, there was just like a ton of things. And then you could um, your parents would give you money 
And so, for instance, it was my allowance. So not it was mine. Five dollars. Oh, they didn't give you money. No, my parents did not give me money. Anyway, <laughs> so you would just go in and you would spend your money, your five dollars in my case, and I bought like I think I bought all of the Nancy Drew series. Also, the um, in this economy, Sweet Valley High. That was another one. Sweet Valley High. Yeah, and it was like what was that? Was that like the, a, the, the... I want to call them the twins. I cannot remember for the life of me what their names were, but they were like very very cool. Um, yeah, and I would buy pencils and posters. Oh, posters and magazines. Posters. Yeah, Bop Magazine. I would buy Bop Magazine with it. Bop Magazine. Yeah. You got the Bop Magazine. Totally. The white van. Yep. It wasn't a white van. It was like a van or like a bus, and it was covered in like book. A bus. T- That's it, very different. It was like wrapped, in like a, it looked like a book. Oh. It was really cool. Okay. And all you could the drive, cool- like driving around book. Well, it's Mobile no different book. than driving around the Wienermobile, like the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Well, anyway. Okay, moving on. Let's talk some trash. Let's about get who? In, get, well, <laughs> about what? Maybe. How about that? Okay. We are getting ready to get into Earth Month. April is Earth Month. And Earth Month. I know. I love Earth Month. Is that a real thing? It is. I know Earth Day is a thing. Right? Earth Month is a well, thing. Wouldn't you think Earth Day goes into Earth Month? Well, does that mean it's Earth Year? Sure. Why not? Let's well, that's make our, it. Every year is Earth Year. Totally. Our, okay. our guy, Tony Donati, we love him. Love we know Tony. him. He great loves, guy, great guy. He loves trash, and he loves curbside cleanups. So we just recently had a recycle event well, not too if, long ago. I don't know if I'd say he loves trash. He's more like more like into getting rid of trash. Okay, you know? I'll, yes, I will agree with that. But he also really loves to give back to the planet, too. He's reduce, reuse, just recycle. So, you know, mm-hmm. but he's got his big um, curbside cleanup coming up here in April. We're talking April 3rd through the 14th. It's free for Kent residents. We love this. And all you have to do is place your extra garbage and yard waste at the curb for your regular yard waste pickup day, and it's gone. Poof, magic. Thank to you. get the full list of everything that's accepted and the amounts, uh, just check out kentonwild.gov slash talking trash. All right, Tracy, are you more of a cider or an ale kind of gal? I prefer beer over cider. That wasn't one of the two options, but... But ale is okay. a beer. Hmm? Is it? It is. Because they have pale ales. Hmm? Well, it's called something different, though. It's ale. What, yeah. what is cider? Is cider also something? Or cider is, cider, is cider. Just cider. Cider is cider. So ale gets to be two things, but cider doesn't. No. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm more of a cider kind of person. Are you? Yep. Sweet I, or tangy? Definitely sweet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I can get down with the tangy here and there. I think the best cider I ever had, I was over in eastern Washington. Mm. Um, I don't remember where I was. I love these stories. But I had a huckleberry cider. <gasps> Not much more to the story than that, but it was... Really good. Okay. Yeah. I need to find out more about this Huckleberry Cider. Mm-hmm. It was just in the middle of nowhere, but it was good. Middle of nowhere. Yeah. Would Look that it be up. Pullman? Look it up. Is that nope, Pullman? Not quite. Oh, okay. That's somewhere. No, well, sort of. Some people would disagree with that one. Well, go Cougs. <laughs> Well, that's fun. KDP is getting ready to do their Kent Cider and Ale Trail coming up on Friday, April 28th, 6 to 9 p.m. Yeah, there's going to be an awesome lineup of brewers. It's going to be hosted by historic downtown businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be some well-known and not-so-local brewers like uh, Greenwood Cider, Top Town Brewery, mm-hmm. Half Line Brewery. I love that. Cole Street Brewing, Two Town Cider, and more. And... Tickets are 30 bucks. You get 10 tastings. You get the disposable glass, the wristband, the program guide, and all kinds of fun things, too. If you want more info and tickets, go to downtownkentwa.com. Uh, we have some special guests today. I'm kind of excited about this. So am I. We know them, and we love them. And our listeners might even know them, too. True. Do you know how they might know them, Tracy? How would because they know Because they probably already Heard them <gasps> slash saw them Stop it. on our social media no introducing oh my gosh. the voice what? of Cuisines of Kent and the producer of the Kent Cares social media series. Hi guys, I'm Christina. Uh, my name is Tobias Sedniff, the voice of Cuisines of Kent. <laughs> Thank you very much. And who are you, Christina? The executive producer of Kent Cares. Correct. Yes. That's exactly what this is. Welcome to the show. Of course. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Tell us a bit about yourselves. The, yeah. I, I want to put this Let's, toward yes. the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Tobias, Christina, tell us a little bit about yourselves. What's the vibe? How are you feeling? Who Who are you? Even? Yeah. Who are you? Tell, or, like, What are you doing here? Who are you? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm. As as was introduced, uh, we are also, or actually also interns for the city of Kent. So the social media projects are one of the things that we do here. But as for how I found out about this position, um, I recently graduated from Seattle Pacific with a bachelor's in English. I was looking for a sort of transitional job, um, and I was uh, I had a, um, a recommendation from someone to look through the county positions that they had. And while I was doing that, I was actually driving through the roundabout um, that they just built, and they had the video boards with the advertising there. And I happened to catch the graphics, you know. Kent is hiring, applying mm-hmm. on the okay. left side. Okay, okay. 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 Might as well check it out. And sure enough, the communications intern position was there, and that was just what I was interested in. So I applied, and I think it's just been so enjoyable to work ever since. Now, Christina, tell us a little bit about you and how you found out about this position. So I'm in college, and so this is a great way to um, balance my school schedule, but also be able to kind of learn new skills and sharpen the skills that I have. Um, And so I'm really interested in social media and also communications as a whole. And I feel like this is a great way to kind of combine the two. I found out about this internship on LinkedIn, I believe, and so I applied through there, um, and it was a really easy process. Um, and so what I love the most about it is kind of what Tobias said, is the variety of the tasks that we do. Um, there's a lot of like social media, but there's also like community events, like Haunted Boulevard or in coffee and conversations. And so I really like interacting with the community and um, meeting new people. Yeah, so I like learning a lot of new platforms that um, we use at the city of Kent for our social media such as Airtable um, to kind of um, assemble all of our creative ideas and also using Sprout Social to schedule our um, posts. And so I really love the fact that it's just a variety of things that you can do on an e- everyday basis and kind of know two days look the same. I think we should first let's let's dive into Cuisines of Kent because a lot of people really enjoy the smooth sounds. Yes, there are of, a lot of fans. You have a lot of fans. You do. You do. We don't have we've never had this before. No, no. We've had plenty of great Cuisines of Kent episodes, but right. uh, there's just something new this time around. Tell us about it. Tell us about it, Tobias. How how did you get started on the series? How how did you make it yours? How do you feel about doing the series? Mm-hmm. How do I feel? Well, um, it, doing social media is not something I've really done before, actually. Because um, <gasps> before, Sugar. I've never really been a social media person myself. Uh, thank you guys for assigning me this series. I've had a lot of fun doing it, going to all these places. Of course, trying the food, but it's a sort of advertisement for these places but also it's just been enjoyable trying out um different video styles Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to work on that Mm -hmm. um because as someone who have has graduated with an english major Mm. has done mostly writing going into like videography even if it is like on a um on a social media scale not scale not really too professional it's still really interesting trying that out um getting a feel for things. That's awesome. (laughs) Um, My favorite part about you doing Cuisines of Ken, not only is your incredibly suave, smooth voice, but the part where you bring us food. Of course. I love that. It's my favorite part. That's your favorite part too? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we all get to benefit from the fact that you have to go (laughs) and do this. Yeah. What was it that you brought back the other day? It was uh, Tacos some, Land, yeah, wasn't we had, it? We had Tacos Land. Um, mm. If I can remember what I brought, it was a few street tacos. They have a variety of um, different, I guess, meats. I think I brought like a shrimp and a fish taco. Okay. We okay. also had one of their uh, torta ahogados. Oh. Whoa. One of their wet ones. What? Well, let's go. So, okay. What? Yeah, we see you. We see and, you. So, how many cuisines of Ken have you done so far? Uh, tacos Land was my fifth one. Okay. Um, and what's your favorite one that you've done so far? Oh, I don't like to pick favorites because, you know, doing all these cuisines, uh, I try to pick something different every time because there's so many pl- restaurants from various culture groups, mm. various food types. Yeah, but types. what's your favorite? Yeah, we just want to know your yeah, favorite. What's your favorite? Yeah, what's your favorite? I can't pick one. Okay, well then we're I moving mean, on. I, I, <laughs> right. I could say pizza's a favorite food of mine. Yeah, so but I'm you a- work at Mod. I, yeah. yeah, you do. You work at Mod. Mm. So-, so trying to Monte's was nice. Okay. okay. Um, they have toasty pizza. I recommend mm. that. Toasty. Mm. To- wait, what? Toasty, toasty pizza? pizza? What's that I mean? Don't know. Well, there's like 
uh, crunchy. Oh, the, this, the dough is very nice, and also the combi- their ingredients are very fresh, mm. and that makes. The so, are you saying that eat- mods isn't? I'm just wondering. Um, <laughs> no, it's a different <laughs> style. <laughs> I, mean, I mostly eat the Mods thin crust, mm-hmm. and they have a, oh. kind of a different selection of ingredients. So it has its own unique flavor, right. and it's more like cooked in an oven. Um, Montez has a different way of cooking their pizzas, which has a different flavor. So they're a bit different in their own way. Okay. Gotcha. Fantastic. Okay, Moving well, on. <laughs> earlier you had mentioned something about people of Ken, and that yes. leads me to our next shining bright star here, yes. Christina. I love her. She has done an amazing job putting together Agreed. our People of Kent and Kent Cares totally. series. Totally, yes. Um, some of those videos, definitely a collaborative effort. We but c- cannot forget, though, Day in the Life, because that one's a hard day one, too. Day in the Life, day in the life. also. Yep. Mm-hmm. So tell us about tell us about those series, Christina. What goes into it? How how How's that going for you? What What's your favorite part? Um, yeah, People of Kent is just a way for our community members to know, um, you know, other people in their community and, like, any organizations that they're involved in, any businesses that they own, and just a really great way to um, unite unity and just get to know um, your neighbors in the community. And so basically what goes into that series is I will go and find people who um, I would think would be a great um, addition to the series like if they have a business if they do a lot of volunteering I just get a recommendation for someone to um, kind of go and talk to them and so the last um, people of Ken person I did interview was Dr. Yoshiko Hardin and she's a president of Renton Technical College um, and it's awesome. just really great to know um, you know people's backstories and basically how they got to where they are now and kind of what they love most about Ken. Um, moving on to Day in the Life. Day in the Life is really interesting because Um, As someone who wasn't very knowledgeable about all the ins and outs of, you know, government, things like this, this gives our viewers an opportunity to kind of get the behind the scenes portion of kind of what goes into people's everyday jobs and their job titles and respective um, duties. And I will basically go and talk to them Mm -hmm. and record their day and basically just follow along their day and um, give an overview of their perspective tasks and things like that. Kent Cares is a series that I do with uh, Tobias as well. Basically, we go out and um, find organizations that Kent uh, supports. Um, and so one of my favorite ones that we did was PIC, which is Pediatric Interim Care Center. And it's for um, babies who have been exposed to opioids during the um, duration of their um, their mother's pregnancy. And so I really love Kent Cares because it's a way to um, see all the many great nonprofit organizations that Kent supports and how people can get services that, that they need, including things like mental health services, um, people who are experiencing homelessness, and, um, another, and other great uh, resources like that. But I really like that it is different and I get to showcase, you know, different skills and different aspects. So... Really fun series. Of all of the day in the lives that you've done so far, what one is your favorite one? Um, let's see. That's a good question. I'm just going to say this because you have followed around one of our communication staff members. Yes. So I'd be very careful about <laughs> what you choose here. Um, most of them are pretty different. They have different tasks, but you kind of see like how everyone works for the benefit of, you know, making sure that the city is, you know, um, working efficiently. Okay, my favorite one is Kyle, um, and he does all of our printing. What's funny? <laughs> well, Kyle's our print shop coordinator, so that was, the, that was and, the right and choice, Yeah, Christina. and he does all of, you know, he prints all the graphics, all the banners and things like that mm-hmm. to let people know about all the events and um, fun things that we're doing here. So it's really fun to kind of see the behinds of the scenes and kind of what goes into all the printing processes. Cool. Well, that's the first one we did, but we haven't published it yet. Wow. <laughs> hey, you gotta get, cut. you gotta get, you have to get close to the microphone because we can't hear that. Oh. It hasn't well, been, it hasn't the... been released yet, mm. right? Why yeah. not? So, uh, yeah, the the one with Kyle was the first one that we shot or that Christina shot. I think we still haven't released that. Why? I think it still has to be capture some more shots, um, some more editing because I feel like with our first uh, video things that we done our first social media posts. We're still kind of learning the ins and outs of how to make proper um, video um, pieces. Mm -hmm. So with the interview process, figuring that out, the different angles and shots. Yeah, most of the footage is recorded. We might just need a little more. Very nice. Question for you both. Who's your favorite employee? Me, obviously. No. Yeah. 
it's both of us. I mean, I should say that <laughs> I feel like both of you have your different types of energies, your different perks. And it's like, well, you know, I, I'll have you know, my energies are aligned. No. And my chakras <laughs> are today. very. Not today. My chakras <laughs> are tip top oh. shape. How are your chakras? My chakras are aligned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> Do we even know what we're talking about? Probably no. not. I didn't think so. I don't know what the chakras okay, are. Okay, okay. I mean, like your head, your heart, you know. I have a book at home about it. Okay. Okay. I don't know do you have I... any thoughts you'd yeah. like to share with our residents totally. and our listeners? What do you want to know today? about, what do you want to share about Kent? Here. Go ahead. Well, specify what thoughts? Just. Nope. Just thoughts. Just thoughts. And vibes. You have 30 seconds. Go. It's a big question. Or just so open Well, space. then give us a big answer. Kent is a great place with a lot of great people and a lot of great businesses. And um, I like it here. I feel like. I guess, you know, having lived in Kent my whole life, it's been nice to just see all the different uh, places in Kent, see it grow, see it um, develop, add new businesses. We've had the, uh, yeah. We are fortunate enough to have really good people like Tobias and Christina. We've had great people. I mean, what have interns allowed you guys to do? Because it's like not many places have interns, right? Mm. Well, We've I will say... The internship has been, the internship program here in the office of the mayor at the City of Kent Communications Department has been really, really awesome. True. Uh, we've had some great people come through. Um, just the way that they contribute their insight, mm -hmm. their own lived experiences and perspectives to the important work that we're doing. Um, the way they go and get me coffee in the morning is so not, useful. No, they don't just do kidding. that. I'm just yeah, kidding. No, they don't do they that. Don't, don't do that. that. I will have you know, I make my own coffee and right. bring it from home. Absolutely. Um, no, I think we just appreciate. I wish they would get me coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we do appreciate the perspective, their fresh ideas, and most importantly, their eagerness and willing to learn. And I think that's what you guys Absolutely. stand out above the crowd. But we have two things that we need to talk about real quick. <gasps> One. <gasps> Christina's birthday is this weekend. So we have to say happy birthday to Christina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And number two, we need to look at the pizza on Tobias' socks right now because he's got pizzas. Isn't that pizzas uh, on your socks? No, what are those? What are those? What are it's those? actually Explain. eggs and oh, bacon okay. and toast and oh. breakfast food. Brecky, brecky. Oh, brecky socks. Coming yeah. through with the brecky socks. With the <laughs> sauce on the shoes. Let's not, mm -hmm. let's yeah. not forget the sauce on the shoes. For, nope. Okay. And something else coming up. We got some jobs. You want to work for the oh, city? The you almost jobs. forgot, I, Tracy. I cannot believe I almost forgot about this because we've talked about what lifeguards. We've talked about what did we talk about last time? Oh, it was driving the lawnmower. Yes, it was very controversial. Yeah. Um, we can move on from that. Okay. But just to reiterate, we still need lifeguards. Still need referees. Still need those like you know, if you love working with kids, we need camp counselors for our parks programs. Totally. We need sports officials. Um, I want to be a referee. A referee? Totally. That sounds fun. Like, Oh, because you get to wear the white and black, yeah. like, cool-looking outfit. And the whistle. And the whistle. Ooh. That makes you just feel so powerful. Totally. You know, and then be like, empowering. no, don't talk to me. You're out. Mm -hmm. You're, You're out. out. Yellow card. Get out. Bye-bye. Well, you're not out yet. So <laughs> if you want to do that, if you want to officiate a sports game with the class and demeanor mm -hmm. befitting our prestigious Kent Parks program, totally. you can... Sign up. apply for that yeah. at kentwa.go slash jobs. I love this. Or jobs.kentwa.gov. One of the two. Try both. I'm not actually sure which one that is. Some of these referees are going to be teenagers. Mm -hmm. So don't be that person that goes out there and starts yelling at the kids because they're doing their job. Okay, I think that wraps things up for this episode number six. She's a snake. <laughs> well. She turned into a snake. <laughs> Just call me Taylor Swift. Okay. 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 Goodbye. Good night. Is it night? I don't know. <laughs> We're in a dark room. What do you do? Okay.